Louisiana vs. All Y'all, Jarrett Roser here today with new head strength and conditioning coach Jeremy Manny up at West Monroe High School. Uh, a, a West Monroe grad himself, a uh, former player, and, and been back on staff there with the Rebels the last few years under Coach Casey Sanders. And now with, with Casey retiring, uh, Jeremy takes over as, as the head coach of that strength and conditioning program. And Coach, you guys are getting a, a great – gap in the the summer training a little family beach trip in so i certainly appreciate you taking a couple minutes to, to chat uh congratulations on the news from a little bit earlier this summer and, and how's everything been going man you know Jared, just just with what's going on i can't i can't complain it's been going really smooth for us uh we really worked hard uh in the weeks before we started to come up with a great plan and i, I gotta give credit to our, our athletic trainer kurt franham he's he's the one of the best in the state uh, our other summer staff coaches who, who have really put went all in to help help get a good plan going, and and it just it's went off without a hitch. We couldn't be be more happy. Yeah, I definitely. I wanted to ask you a lot about that because it's been such a a strange summer of preparation compared to what anyone's used to, and and certainly coaches of every position are trying to figure out exactly how to best handle it. But for some of you guys, and in, in the strength and conditioning side and then the athletic training side, it's, it's as top of mind for you as, as it can be for, for anyone, um, for you to take over in the middle of this. And obviously you've, you've been around and, and you've played a big role over there prior to this, but for you to take the reins and, and be in charge of, of that aspect of, of the rebels athletic programs amid everything that's happening, how, how was that for you just kind of ta taking taking a minute to kind of wrap your mind around that and figure out what the protocols were going to have to be and how to approach some of this? Well, you know, it's funny you said that. Somebody made a comment to me, I guess, at the end of May, beginning of June. They're like, hey, congratulations. Not only do you get to follow a legend, you get to do it in the middle of a pandemic. And so I was like, yeah, well, you know, <laughs> if, you, if you can't have a good challenge, and what's it worth doing for? But, uh, you know, it, it – it, at first, it seemed daunting trying to, to, to abide by all the, all the criteria. And just, just for everybody uh, that's listening, Washtenaw Parish, our superintendent, our, our administrative staff at the school board, uh, they are following the, the LHSA recommendations to a T. Uh, so we are cutting no slack. We, we're probably one of the most stringent school districts in the parish, I mean, in the state, as far as what we have to do. And, you know, and I get it. I'm, I, I get it. It's about, all about liability. I'm not complaining about that at all. But uh, as far as what we've seen other schools in the state do, uh, comparatively speaking, we're, we're having to do a, a lot more. Uh, and so, uh, you know, it's been a challenge, but our kids have adapted well. Our coaching staff has adapted well. And, uh, you know, and we're getting work in. We're getting good, solid work in. So uh, I'm, I'm pleased. That's something that as I've talked to coaches around the state and ask how the kids are kind of adapting to stuff, you get the same sort of answer that, that we usually tend to get is that the kids will adapt and figure this thing out if, if they have good leadership kind of explaining them this is the way it's got to be. And it's, it sounds like that obviously has been the case for you guys is, is the kids have, have kind of rolled with the punches, so to speak, and, and are taking care of their end of the thing. No doubt. Kids are resilient, Jarrett, and, and, and they're going to do what's asked of them. And, you know, our kids, they've always been that way. They've always worked hard. And, uh, you know, as long as they have a means, they're going to they're gonna, they're gonna give us all they got. Um, what does the, the routine for you guys look like right now, particularly when you look at kind of the, the weight training aspect and, and knowing that a lot of guys are going to be using those weights and those machines, how, how tight – do you guys have to be with making sure to, to wipe everything down and stay on top of everything uh, even more so than usual? Well, we started off, Jared, uh, kind, kind of making the decision to, to not lift. Uh, we were going to do strictly outside. And uh, we had toyed around with doing a few other things at the beginning and, and just made that decision to say, you know, we don't know uh, what uh, – condition our kids are going to show up in after not not literally doing anything for three months um some kids have been working every day some kids work some some have done absolutely nothing and so we started that uh in in the first few days went well and then we're like you know uh <laughs> let's 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 make a change so 
we had recently just bought a, a, a brand new uh, hammer strength uh, set up in our way. All our new, all our power racks were brand new the year before. A lot of money. So we went back and got our old stuff and uh, our old power racks and have 12 power racks. So we situated outside. We have like a covered track area where we run outside and it's real long. And so each rack is situated uh, about eight and a half feet apart. And so uh, we have we have done our groups in a way where we can get a weight workout in uh, with each group. We have six groups varsity and three groups freshmen. That's nine groups during the course of a day. So it makes for a long summer day based on what we used what we're used to having. Uh, we're averaging about twenty kids, twenty a little over twenty kids per group. Uh, and so half will go on the weights, and then half will go uh, uh, you know to the turf area and do their their. Uh, run a part of the of the workout and then they swap uh and we roll a group in there probably every i say a new group shows up about every 50 minutes uh now that group will be in a in a staging area where they'll do like stretches they'll do uh you know uh static and dynamic stretches ab work all their their, their of course their temperature checks their roll call Everything that takes about 15, 20 minutes to do, which will give the, the other group time to finish, and then we'll cycle the next group in. And so uh, no group, no one group, even though we're splitting that, those groups apart in the middle, no, you know, that one static group of 20 kids will never come in contact with the other group. Uh, and that's kind of how – because there's different entry and exit points. Um, and so it just, it just kind of runs like, a, like an assembly line. And so uh, it's working really well for us. Uh, the kids show up in mask, uh, and they get temperature checked by a coach who's in a mask, gloves, uh, and and then they're they're not admitted to the facility after until that's done. Then they get admitted, like I said, that staging area, and in the staging area they're about seven and a half feet apart, uh, and then they'll go from there and they'll split up, either go to the turf field where they're about fifteen feet apart uh, when they're doing their run, and then we're doing their weight workout. They're about eight and a half, so we're well over the criteria set by the state and that's kind of what we wanted we wanted to say if, if the state came to us and we had a positive they're gonna they did ask they, they they have asses what are you doing and so when we tell them they're like well, that's great so we wanted to be you know we want to set the standard for that uh and and it's worked really well for us yeah i, I was just about to say i mean it, it's obviously a lot of planning and organization but from us talking before it's something that's worked out very well in, in terms of keeping those guys safe and just in, ensuring that safety for everybody. So that's, that's awesome to, to hear that it's worked out so well. Um, for you, we, we talk about you come in during the middle of a pandemic into this role. You also replace your mentor and just a, a legend in Louisiana high school strength and conditioning, a guy that has played such a huge role in the success of of that football program and of athletics up at Westman road through the years, coach Casey Sanders, that piece of it for you to, to be the guy that takes the reins as, as he steps away, what, what is kind of the meaning there for you with all of your ties to that school and the athletics programs there? And what have been some of those conversations with him and you just starting to sort of pass that torch along? Well, you know, just to begin, just, just for me to be able to, to have the opportunity to replace Coach Sanders, and I'll never replace him. I don't want to replace him. Uh, my job, my, my goal is to to uphold what he has started and, and to, uh, to to continue the traditions that he, uh, along with some of the other coaches uh, from the from you know the early periods, have, have laid those foundations uh, for us for the kids. And so that's just what I want to do. Um, but you know. Me and Casey, I got to I got to be under him uh, for the last few years, uh, and and that was just a dream come true for me. Uh, starting way back, whenever you know uh, I, I played at West Monroe, uh, you know in eighth grade, I would walk up from the middle school, which is right down the road, where the where, it's where the school board office is now, and and get trained with him two or three days a week, and just just trying to soak up every chance I got. And then of course we go on to win you know a state championship in '93, my junior year, and I won multiple Power of State Championships under Casey. And just all that happening for me, it kind of, I guess, solidified what I wanted to do because I know how those guys, how those coaches, Coach Shouse, Coach Aldridge, Coach Sanders, uh, Coach Eastling, all those guys affected me, and, and I wanted to do the same for kids. And so um, it's, it's, you know, I've been saying this a lot, it's a dream come true, but it, it's more than a job to me. It means so much to me in my heart. 
and and whatever I can do to help keep the traditions that we have established going forward is what I want to do. So, um, you know, but being able to be with Coach Sanders uh, and 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 asking questions every day and and watch him watch him work and and not and not just from a from a lift from a player aspect but from a, from a coach just seeing how he handles certain situations uh, because you know that that's a big deal is how you communicate with your athletes and how uh, you know what what you really want to do what you see other coaches do that you may not want to do and 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 just being able to watch him work will help me uh, you know know how I want to be with, with my athletes. How has his transition to having a little bit more free time theoretically uh, been looking so far? He actually, um, he did not waste any time, Jared. He, uh, he has actually moved that him and his wife both retired uh, and he has moved to um, uh, Tennessee. I'm trying to think uh, Chattanooga, Tennessee, where his oldest son is an orthopedic surgeon. And so they bought a house there. They've already sold their house in West Monroe uh, and they love it there. They would travel there six, seven, eight times a year just to visit their grandkids and all that. So uh, he's, he's living life to its fullest and I couldn't be happier for him. Uh, he, he's going to miss it. You know, he, he calls regularly. How's it going? Any problems, you know, you know, wants to know what we're doing and he tries to stay in touch, but you know, he's also enjoying his time. Yeah, it's, it's a lot easier to take that step away when you have the grandbabies calling your name. and, and No doubt. That's right. <laughs> um, when you look at, at where just kind of the, the status of strength and conditioning as, as a part of uh, the, pro, the program there at West Monroe and really in high school athletics as a whole, that, I mean, when you were going through there as a student, it was some of the earlier years of what Coach Shiles, Coach Sanders, and everybody were building there, the late 80s, early 90s when you look back at where that was and how much of a role that played in, in some of the successes through the years, and then you look at sort of the, the progress over time and, and how big it is now still for, for you guys, as well as for, it's such, it's such a staple now compared to what it was a few decades ago. Um, what stands out about just some of those memories of being a guy going through that in the earlier years for that program and then to, to see kind of the progress through your professional years too? Well, I think as an athlete, I didn't realize how much, you know, back then, how much we were on the cutting edge that we were. I, I firmly believe all the successes we had was because of that strength program. You just didn't have that back then. You surely didn't have – one guy who was the strength coach and that's all he did like coach Sanders was there was that was few and far between he may have been one of the first in the state uh and so today it's the norm you know uh you know so not West Monroe is just not uh the only one doing everybody's doing it so not only do we have to continue what we're doing but we've got to try to stay on the cutting edge and that's kind of what uh me and then I'll go ahead and mention my, my assistant uh, that, that kind of took my role from his, his, his name is DeMichael Dizer. And DeMichael played at Sterlington, uh, played at Grambling, then went on to play a few years for the Seattle Seahawks. And now he's our, our uh, one of our DB coaches, and now he's assistant strength coach as well. And uh, he's just unbelievable. He's been around a lot of different coaches. He's seen a lot. He, he He's very – his his specialty, I would say, is more the outside part of it, the – the speed, the agility, the mobility, uh, and he has brought a lot of fresh ideas. Uh, and, and just having him to be able to bounce things off of uh, has been great. Uh, and so I see us, um, you know, again, trying to stay on that cutting edge of speed, trying to stay on that cutting edge of injury prevention while still maintaining our, our reputation for a strong, powerful football team. Uh, and so uh, – for us going into the next decade, that's that's kind of our goal is to stay on that edge, uh, stay you know continue being the best at what we do, and and even be be better at what we may have been. Uh, I'm not saying we weren't good at it, but just continue to get better in that in those areas. As you you guys now kind of continue to take steps toward what is hopefully as close to normal of a season as possible. Obviously, there's a still there's still a lot up in the air and we're trying to figure some things out for the fall. But as you pro continue to progress toward ideally a, a close to normal season and close to normal start time, what does that look like for, for you guys in terms of just making sure that those kids are ready, knowing it has been such a weird off season? 
Well, you know, that's one of the reasons why we took off this week, Jared, is, is that uh, we feel as a staff that we probably aren't starting practice August 3rd or whenever that day was supposed to be. I think it was Monday, August 3rd was the day we're supposed to start. And so we feel like that we will hopefully get to continue in the stage we are for a few extra weeks, which we're not complaining about from, as a, from a strength staff standpoint. The football guys may, the, you know, the dedicated football guys may be a little upset not being able to start, but, you know, we would definitely take a few extra weeks of, of getting our kids ready to play. Uh, so, you know, my goal and our strength staff's and goal is, is to, one, uh, be very careful in what we're doing. Uh, we, we, we have been very um, reluctant to push real hard, you know, and it, from the outside, you know, from somebody who maybe watched our summer program before, it may look like, well, they're not doing a whole lot. But what you've got to understand is it's all relative because when you take a kid who ain't done it for three months, you're doing a lot uh, based on what we are doing. Uh, and so we felt like that we could, if we get a chance to play, we could lose or win a state championship, you know, during the summer if we didn't weren't careful and, and 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 we got somebody hurt and that's what we didn't want to do so these first four weeks have been you know a, a huge success for us because everybody is has worked hard you can tell they're working hard because they're leaving their their, their work uh, no injuries um, and and I think they're all eager to come every day our participation has been good uh, even whenever you know nothing is mandated we can't you know we can't mandate they come obviously. Uh, our parish has said that, you know, nothing is mandatory. We can't hold them accountable. We can't do anything to them. So they know that and, and they're still coming. So that's a big deal to us. So hopefully this week gives them a little rest and then we'll come back and for four more weeks, we'll hit it. We'll hit it again. Yeah, I think those guys are just itching to, to do anything and know that they're working towards it after being stuck in the house for as long as a lot of them have been. Um, so hopefully we get, we get to some Friday nights before too much longer, but continue to do it safely, man. I appreciate you taking a couple minutes to kind of share some of that perspective on everything. Not a problem. Not a problem. Enjoyed it. Good deal. Coach, always a pleasure. Again, he's Coach Jeremy Manny, the new head strength and conditioning coach uh, up there at West Monroe High School for Louisiana vs. All Y'all, Jared Roser.